welcome back to What To Do Wednesday, where we address new gardeners, would-be gardeners, I kill everything gardeners, and provide simple steps that they can do right now to ensure that they successfully grow something this year. This week, we're going to be talking about location. Now that you've made notes of your first and last frost date, the next thing you're gonna want to think about is location. Where are the options of growing something? Now for each of us, the answer to that question will be different, but there's a few things that we can all be thinking about as we process and think through the idea of where we can grow something. And those things that we should be thinking about are, do you own your property or do you rent your property? Or is there an HOA in place? These are factors that may limit or dictate what, where, and how you try to start a garden. Do you live in an apartment or a condo? Do you have a patio or a balcony or a back porch space that you can throw a couple containers that would look really nice and do really well? Are there any outbuildings or large trees surrounding us? What type of soil do you have? Is your area known to be rocky or clay filled? Do you have a lot of sand? Is there already a place that you have in your mind? Never underestimate your gut. If there's a spot, say on your porch or your patio, or even in a sunny window that you've thought, wow, like it would be really nice if I could find something to grow there, that's something you want to keep in your back pocket. And finally for my list, one that I don't want to rule out because it could be a really viable option that most of us don't think about. Are there any community gardens nearby that you could be a part of? You want to consider these things because really these are the early steps in setting you up for success. You want to make sure that whatever method you try, whether it's in ground or containers, you want to make sure that it'll work for that area. You don't want to go and jump into that Pinterest perfect raised bed setup that you saw when your HOA is going to come right behind you and tell you that you need to take it out. The next thing that you're going to want to do is to go outside and look for the sun. Where is the sun? Can you see it? Which direction? Do you know what direction it rises and sets in? That will give you some indication on how your house or your property or your balcony is positioned to receive sun. And one of my new favorite things to do to get a grasp on the sun and sunny areas versus shady areas is to do a sun map. Now, if you want to come over here to my desk, I'm going to show you how I've set up a sun map for our area and talk you through the steps. To do your sun map, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is draw out the area in question. Your yard, patio, a balcony, whatever that space is for you. And so this is the space that I'm doing. And what you might wanna do is if there's a few areas in question, just kinda highlight those areas. And those will be areas that you focus on when you do your sun mapping. Now once you have this drawn out, you need to make four copies. You're going to color in the regions of your map that are sun and shade. You want to pick one color for sun, one color for shade. For me, I'm using blue for shade and yellow for sun. And you want to go out at four times. First time between 7 and 8 a.m. The second time between 10 and 11 a.m. The third time between 12.30 and 1.30 and then between 3 and 4. Once you pick your day and you're ready to do your first map, you're going to go outside and you're going to color in the areas that are shaded with your shade color and color in the areas that are sunny with your sun color. So here you can see at my 7 to 8 a.m. map, I have some areas of sun over here just to the right of my house, but my back 
patio area is shaded. So I color that in. You will repeat this exercise all four times over the course of the day. Once you're done shading in all four hours, you want to lay each of your drawings out like this and start looking at your areas and evaluating them for how much sun or shade the areas got. And also note anything that kind of surprises you. So for me, next to my house and driveway, there's a small area for a garden. I thought for sure that space would be full sun. I thought my house would cast enough of a shadow that I wouldn't get any sun there. But as you can see, when I went out first thing in the morning, I had sun. Even by noon, I had sun in the areas closest to the pathway. This surprised me and it turns out I'm getting a pretty good bit of sun. So this really opens up the realm of possibilities for that little garden bed for me. And I'm really excited about that. So let's say I was looking for a space to grow a container of tomatoes. Now tomatoes, you're going to want six to eight hours of sun coming in here between that covered area and my house where I've got shade almost all day. That's not going to be the spot that I want to put my container of tomatoes. But this far end of the patio region over here is getting sun for most of the day. This area has really good potential for growing tomatoes in containers because of the amount of sunlight it gets. These maps are so helpful to help you pick plants that will do well in those areas based on the sunlight that you've mapped out today. And that's it. I hope that I've given you a couple things to think about and ponder on in the next week. Make sure that you pick a day this week and you draw out your space, whatever that looks like, and four times that day, go out and map your sun on each of your sheets so that you can have your very own sun map. Those will be foundational as we start to dive into specifically what things you can and should be looking to grow. What about those food lists? Have you noticed this week that you've been reaching for certain things and making mental notes? Or maybe as you've been cooking, you've noticed, hey, I use a lot of canned tomatoes. Whatever those things are, I'm sure you're making mental notes. Let's also start taking those notes from your mind to something physical and tangible. Whether that is pulling out your notebook, writing down those produce items that you find yourself using the most, or maybe just pulling out your phone and in the notes app, starting a list of items that you have been reaching for and using this past week. I wanna encourage you to continue that step. And if you're like, what the heck are you talking about? Make sure you watch this video from last week that I'll link at the end. Thank you guys so much for giving me a couple minutes today as we chat about location. I am so thankful that you're on this journey with me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notified of when our video gets posted next week. Until then, I'll see you later.